and welcome to Nani Notes. Our topic today is special right triangles. And, um, well, we're going to look at one of them in this video, and uh, we're starting with a square. So we got this little square right here, and uh, I want you to pull out that ruler of yours, and I want you to measure it. Everyone always asks, metric or English? Well, you tell me. I think I'm going to go metric. Now, on my simulated ruler, it looks like I've got four centimeters. I know some of you maybe start at the one, and you go to five. Yeah, that looks like four centimeters or 40 millimeters. So we'll just pull that off to the side. Um, you know, I think the one on your paper is actually going to be a different size. I just want to give you an idea. So we're going to measure that. And, um, and then I want you to draw a diagonal. Go ahead and draw that diagonal. Hey, while you're at it, why don't you measure that? So we're going to take this thing and uh, let's, let's see what we got there. I'm not exactly sure. But it's a little harder to see on this, is it? And do as best as you can. And I'm, I'm seeing I'm 55, 56, 57. I don't know. I, I, I think I'm getting 57. So um, let me get this ruler out of the way. And maybe I'll make a note of that later on. 57, 56. Yeah, I think 56 or 57, something like that in this example. So let's, let's put that away for now. Let's, um, oh, let's do this. Um, I'm going to shade this triangle. I want you to think about this here. We've taken this, we've drawn one of the two diagonals in this square. And um, I know a couple things about this triangle. I know it's a right triangle. I've got a right angle down here. Now, I also know I've got these two angles are congruent. You remember the base angles there back in... Well, back last semester. So these two angles are congruent. And um, golly, I, I mean, we already know how much they are because they're, well, they're both congruent and they must add up to 90. That's the corollary to the triangle sum theorem telling me that they're 45. But hang on, there's something else going on here too. You, you know, you could consider, hey, those two triangles are congruent. The rotations are congruent and also they're congruent this way too. And these triangles would all be congruent by side angle side or side side side. A lot of good review from last chap or last semester. Remember when we did all that. Um, well, as a result, no matter how you look at it, you got 45 degree angles everywhere here. Um, you could say these two have to be congruent by uh, corresponding parts of congruent triangles. And um, and, the, and they are, of course, complementary. They form a right angle. So they have to be 90. These two are the base angles of an isosceles triangle. They have to be congruent, and they have to sum to 90 as well. So um, it looks like we've got ourselves a 45-45-90 triangle. And that's what we're going to call this one, uh, the first of our special right triangles. So I'm glad you're making notes on your paper here, on your little worksheet. And... Um, I'm, I'm losing track of where I'm going here. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know what I'm going to do next. I want you to take this, I'll move this out of the way. Imagine you got a little uh, right triangle right here. Same one, where this side is one, then this side would have to be one. And, and you're, we're imagining a smaller version of this triangle. And, um, you know, like we fold it up a little square. And I want us to go through the um, Pythagorean, oh, wrong button. I want us to go through the Pythagorean theorem. And that the sum of the squares of the legs equal the square of the hypotenuse. So I'll say in this case, c squared is a squared plus b squared. And in this particular case, I'll say each of the sides is 1. Well, you see where this is going, so go ahead and jot this down. And 1 squared is 1, so therefore c squared is 2. We're going to take the square root of both sides, and that's what we get. We get c is equal to radical 2. Hey, that's kind of cool. Well, um, what we're looking at is a ratio, a ratio of sides. And um, we're going to take this, and just like we did with the Pythagorean triples, I want you to imagine, you got a triangle like this, I could enlarge it by any size. In this particular case, it happens to be on a, well, a scale of 1 to 5. But um, 
1, 1, radical 2. Well, in this particular case, 5, 5, 5, radical 2. So um, we can enlarge it or reduce it by any amount. And, um, and we're going to preserve that ratio. So right now, I'm flip your paper over, and on the back side, I've got a couple of these I want you to work out. And let's fill in. Let's fill in the missing sides there. And we're going to go in radical form. I know you guys are going to have to do decimals sometime, but let's, let's just make sure we can work in a simplified radical form. The ratio of the sides is 1 to 1, 1 to 1 to radical 2. Well, the problems always start out easy like this. I suppose this is 12, 12, 12. And the missing side, of course, would be 12 radical 2. Um, now, you remember that that's the whole number 12 times that irrational number square root of 2, which is about 1.41. We'll, we'll, don't worry, we'll do a little decimal towards the end. And now let's look at the green one here. Well, if this is radical 2, the, ra the relationship 1, 1, radical 2, well, I guess the sides must be 7. Hey, okay, we did the easy ones. You probably see problems like that all the time. Hey, what about this one over here in magenta? Now, this is weird. The ratio is 1 to 1 to radical 2. Well, you know, I could set up a proportion. I could say 3 radical 7 is to 1, as this side is to radical 2. I guess I should have written that out, but I just, I prefer to think of it this way. When you're going from this side to this side, multiply by the square root of 2. What's 3 radical 7 times the square root of 2? 3 radical 14. It's that easy. Okay. All right. Well, how about one like this? You might you might see something like this in your class. One one square root of two. I'm going to multiply five radical two times radical two, and you all probably remember. Oh yeah, that's the whole number ten. And there it is. There's the justification. Five radical two times radical two is five times two or ten. How about in this case? I've got a hypotenuse of 12. 1, 1, square root of 2. When I'm going from here to here, I'm going to divide by radical 2. Well, when I divide by radical 2, 12 divided by radical 2, I then rationalize the denominator. Remember, I, I divide, and well, when I do that, I multiply by the square root of 2 over 2. That's going to give me 12 radical 2 over 2. Divide out the 2s, I've got 6 radical 2. Hey, I'll tell you the truth. I, I tell my students the easy way to do this. You can rational divide and rationalize at the same time. Take the number 12. What's half of 12? 6. 6 radical 2. And that works every single time. Yeah, even this time, too. You're looking at this one and say, wow, that's ugly. And, um, yeah, that's kind of odd. 7 radical 5. I don't know why you would have that there, but but let's not lose sight of the fact. I'm going to go from here to here. I'm going to divide by radical 2. And, of course, that's not proper. So we're just going to multiply uh, by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. And that's going to give us 7 radical 10 over 2. Not a very pretty answer, but an answer nonetheless. Hey, that's some, in some examples, and there's some more for you to work out, and you know you're going to have to do some decimal work. So, hey, let's go back, flip back to the first. Uh, go back to this page here. Remember we said we, I asked you to measure this, and um, uh, I don't know, I think we got something like 56, or, you know, it looks like I may have gotten 57, but... Um, then you can say, well, what about that radical 2 business? Well, 1, 1, square root of 2. This hypotenuse, shouldn't it just be, sorry, i got to write it out right like this, 40 radical 2. Well, the problem with that, I mean, it's not like you're ever going to go to Home Depot and buy 40 radical 2 feet of lumber or something. You know, it's, um, it's an awkward thing. I, I mean, that's, that's what you have in a math class. Um, let's convert that to a decimal that actually makes sense. So we're going to pull out our calculator. You clean that off. And uh, maybe we could shrink that up. Maybe not. Can we use the smaller calculator? Uh, nope. we got to use this one. So let's take 40 radical 2 and convert it to a decimal. We'll take 40 
times, and we'll take the 2 here. That's my square root. That's the square root of 2, that irrational number we all know and love. So 40 times the square root of 2 is, heavens to Murgatroyd, 56.56. And look, look at that. We were saying between 56 and 57 is what we measured. Yes, you and, um, well, if you're teaching this, all your students should be within a whole degree. Uh, I'm <laughs> within a whole millimeter and um, within one millimeter. And if you're a student, yes, you should. You should be within plus or minus one millimeter. So um, uh, good job on this. And I guess we'll get to the other one. And, or, well, I mean, there's, there, I left you some on the back side for you to do yourselves. And, um, and then we can maybe take on the other special right triangle. So that's all for 90 notes. Thank you for watching.